joining us today. My name is Kristen Rosa and I'm the Marketing Director here at Sunset Learning Institute. And today we're excited to be joined by eGame, who's going to talk all about ECE um, and some myth busters. Uh, we're up to version 12.5 now, so we'll go over some of the new features and demos as well. Um, so just real quick housekeeping, everyone will continue to stay muted throughout the entire presentation. So if you do have questions, you can go ahead and post them in the Q&A box you'll see at the bottom of your screen, and we'll make sure someone gets that answered for you. Also, we will be sending out a recording of this presentation to all registrants early next week, so keep an eye out for that. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and kick it off. Thank you, Kristen. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Karthik Babu. I had partner success at Egan, and today, I'm joined by our product leader, Abhinav Sahai. Uh, this is his product. He uh, heads ECE along with Adam Mermel at Cisco, and Abhinav also heads the S plus add-ons that we'll be talking about today. Uh, next slide, Abhinav. All right, so from, uh, today we have an amazing agenda. Uh, so I'm going to be covering the EC extensions that are available as part of S+. Um, I'll be talking about deal registration, um, which allows the resources for partners and customers, as well as the ECE mailer. This is for folks who are implementing uh, ECE. And then Abhinav will be talking about um, what's new in ECE 12.5. Um, you know, the team has worked hard and incorporated a lot of features, so a very exciting session with actually a demo as well uh, of features. And then we'll definitely talk about system requirements and specifications. There are some changes uh, that we want to bring to your attention. And also the compatibility matrix, um, you know, as usual for the customer, uh, there's really uh, nothing uh, from a compatibility perspective. Um, it's supported on all browsers, on all devices. But for agents and administrations, you want to pay attention to some of the changes. And as Kristen mentioned, uh, we definitely have Q&A towards the end. But to make it interactive, do raise questions. And as we go through the uh, topics, uh, you know, we'll try to address the questions during the session. Next slide, please, Avina. All right. So first thing first, let's talk about the EC extensions that are available. And Avina will be talking about uh, some of the more exciting features such as call track, uh, which was released earlier this year, as well as messaging hub that is now available as part of the 12.5 update. So Cisco ECE is the OEM version of uh, eGain email and chat. Uh, it's the replacement for EIM WIM. So for a lot of you folks, you may have used EIM WIM in the past. And with Cisco 11.6, ECE is now available as part of your voice enterprise license. You don't have to pay anything extra. So we see a lot of customers migrating from MM to ECE as well as net new adoption. And uh, we definitely also want to talk about the add-ons that are available. So, uh, you know, uh, when you compete with companies like Oracle, with right now, with Salesforce, and all of the enterprise uh, platforms out there, uh, including Avaya, I3, uh, 5.9. Uh, email and chat is available to you as part of UCCE, but there are other capabilities that are available as part of the S-plus program, uh, such as Super Chat, which includes video, co-browse, uh, which is an augmented capability for agents, assisting customers on your website, uh, you know, messaging, which uh, Abhinav will talk about, uh, and knowledge and AI. So knowledge is a very powerful capability where you have access to the content, where you have access to an automation workflow to enhance your journeys on your website or within your organization. Uh, we have virtual assistant and chatbot capabilities as part of S+. Um, you know, today in a digital world, we are looking at automation, we are looking at augmented uh, enhancement of uh, agent capabilities. And so we have complementary products that assist the agent as well as the customer, uh, makes your um, contact center available 24 by 7 over the web, uh, irrespective of agent availability. And to complement that, we have a very detailed set of capabilities within our analytics and reporting platform. So, you know, we have operational analytics, digital analytics, and knowledge analytics, and journey analytics. So, 
at a high level this gives you the operational metrics to run your contact center to run your digital uh, retail space um, from a digital capabilities you know you can track kpis you can set benchmarks and you can monitor this as your contact center evolves and progresses on the knowledge side you can look at content usage you can look at customer journey and then tweak the experiences and make knowledge available to deflect uh, inquiries easy inquiries from the contact center but also to complement uh, customers from self serving and agents also from solving complex scenarios next slide please avinav uh, the last thing i wanted to mention is the deal registration so for partners who are looking for assistance on ece uh, either in a net new opportunity you can reach out to us uh, and then we will have the resources available to help you um and if you need help with s plus add-ons again use the partner deal registration available on our website and you have all of the expertise available from the sales uh, team as well as the product team which includes abhinav and his engineering team on the back end and lastly we have the ece-success@external.cisco.com mailer for those of you who are not familiar this is manned by abhinav and his engineering team as well as adam mormel our cisco product manager and his engineering team who will you know guide you with best practices and help you um, go past any technical difficulties any solutioning difficulties that you may have with your ec implementation so please use that as well now with that i now hand it over to abhinav sahai to go through 12.5 and uh, the amazing work that him and his team have done over the last 3 months over to you abhinav well uh, thanks a lot karthik and a very good morning good afternoon good evening to everyone uh, who have whichever time zone who, who you guys are in uh, myself abhinav sahai as uh, karthik mentioned i look after uh, ece uh, and solutions uh, plus program uh, from egain i work closely with adam mermel my cisco bu counterpart so today uh, 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 with all the good work that we did with EC 12.0, uh, to those of who you are aware, we did some significant enhancements in EC with the 12.0 versions, which came last year, uh, January 2019. We did uh, uh, some good features like blended routing, overriding of concurrent task limits, geo redundancy, uh, finesse, uh, tight finesse integration. uh with the uh, finis workflows popovers and toaster notifications and many such uh, many more such uh, features uh i am very excited to announce uh, uh the that uh, ec 12.5 is now also live it's available uh to download on cisco website as you can see here it it got released uh, last month uh january 2020 So EC 12.5 is aligned with UCC E release of 12.5 and is included with all CC deployments including CCE, PCCE and HCS. EC 12.5 uh, comes with a fresh installer as well as a seamless upgrade installer that will allow EC 12.0 deployments uh, to upgrade to EC 12.5 seamlessly. uh the uh, one of the best thing with ec 12.5 is that it is also backward compatible with 11.6 and 12.0 we'll talk about it uh, in about it in the entire solution compatibility uh, later in the presentation so do uh, 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 i would strongly recommend to stick to that session because uh, there are some significant takeaways with the with the solution compatibility here with ec 12.5 All right without wasting much time let's uh, dive into the new features uh, that we did with 12.5 we have done some many enhancements to further enhance the agent and supervisor experience and at the same time making entire ec application more robust and feature rich for example agent can now uh, control to have a gadget view of their choice with the option of uh, uh, to view ec gadget in a single pane in a double or a triple pane supervisors on the other hand can pick or transfer emails from the default exception queue it was a long awaited feature uh, which is now enabled with ec 12.5 we have also introduced shortcut keys for agent availability to align with the finis 12.5 uh, capability uh, in the next section i'll be walking you through each feature and uh, will give an, a quick overview of agent supervisor and customer experience uh, uh, with all the features 
All right. Uh, so the first uh, one in the line is agent gadget layout, as I was talking. So it provides uh, more flexibility for agents to view the EC desktop. Uh, they can they can set the EC desktop as per their uh, preferred view. They can choose it to be reflected. Uh, they can choose it to see it as a single pane or a double pane as it comes today, or a triple pane as per their screen space. Uh, so, for example, in a typical contact center, agent works on a big screen with multiple gadgets on. So, not every time agent uh, uh, would occupy would want the, their gadgets to occupy the full space, or at times when they are working on some complex emails or chat, they want to see. Uh, they want to utilize more space for the for a particular gadget that they are working on. With this capability, agents uh, we have provided the flexibility in the EC gadget uh, uh, as per their agent uh, capacity at a particular time to view the EC gadget. So let's let's quickly see what this means. So so this is uh, the agent gadget layout now. Uh, on the on the user drop down, agent can see. Uh, uh, the layout options and as you can see here there are four options default one pane two pane and three pane so <clears throat> as the name suggests is, is one pane two pane and three pane is pretty simple agent will be able to see the gadget in these three so like for example here agent can see the gadget in three panes uh, the leftmost is the inbox pane the center one is the reply pane and the uh, third one on the right is the info pane all in one go so, uh, but the default option is the automatic one. So, it uh, if by default it is it is selected uh, uh, out of the box when EC gets installed, the default one is selected. What that means is that it senses the cap it senses the available screen space uh, that has been made available to EC gadget and then uh, adjust the pane view for the for the agent on the first go. But agent always can can override the default selection. And make it to one, two, or three panes. So let's quickly see how how it looks uh, in a default pane. So to start with, <clears throat> so like for example, let's say the EC gadget is uh, allowed uh, is hosted in this particular screen space only, uh, which is around 990 pixels, I would say. So it it opens up in a single pane, as you can see here. Agent can see the in uh, the all the emails in the inbox pane. It can click and go into the reply pane. And at the same time, can go into the info pane to see the case, customer history, and activity details, and things like that. <clears throat> now, let me increase the screen space to a bit more, so to to make it around 100, 1000, 1, around 1000 pixels. Uh, I am logging back uh, as an agent, and since I have selected the default option, so earlier it it opened up in a single pane, and now it is opened up in a in a in a double pane because there is more screen space available so it it readjusted itself recalibrated to a double pane view so now uh, inbox uh, pane is different and and uh, and and the info pane uh, uh, is the second pane that has come up here uh, where agents can see the case customer details now let me uh, sign it out and increase the screen space further so there is more browser, uh, so there is more space available to the EC gadget. And now, if I am logging as an agent, so the because of the default option, it automatically selects a uh, three pane view. So this is uh, specifically useful uh, when agent uh, is uh, working on on emails uh, uh, within the EC gadget and wants to uh, uh, look at all the emails that he has received. Uh, uh, reply, work on a particular email and also at the same time see the customer case, uh, customer or case history as to how many times a customer has interacted, what are what are the specific details and things like that. So as I said, this is the default view, but agent can or uh, any time override override the view to one pane, two pane, or three pane up to as per his uh, uh, preference. Uh, any questions so far? <coughs> All right. So the next next feature in line is uh, the block visitor. So this was again uh, a very uh, very significant feature again requested by multiple customers and partners, uh, where agents can block chat customers such as uh, there are uh, these days there can be spam bots or some abusive customers who are uh, who are doing uh, some. Um, 
spurious chats to the contact center uh, with this feature agents now have the cap capability to block such uh, customers or spam bots uh, this is again configurable administrators uh, enable this ability for agents uh, they can administrators can configure the length and criteria of the uh, of the ban and once the customer is blocked uh, if if there are if there is a need uh, for them to get unblocked for example if an agent has agent has blocked the customer and uh, who has now who has now realized the mistake and they, it was a genuine customer so supervisors can anytime go and unblock the customer if such case arises so it's, uh, these are very simple configurations it's a partition level setting it comes it, it is reflected under the security there is a node of block visitor and uh, uh, you can configure the criteria uh, it could be the ip address based or a cookie based and uh, administrator can also specify the duration of hours like for how long a customer needs to be banned uh, let's quickly see the experience uh, how it looks like uh, so in this example here uh, a customer is uh, a customer is using abusive language and uh, so as you can see customer is abusing and using foul language so the the chat comes to the agent and agent wants that uh, i will block you so agent wants the customer and goes ahead and uh, block the agent from here block the customer from uh, the block here uh, the configuration uh, the block visitor setting configuration we have done is for 12 hours so this customer will be blocked for 12 hours after 12 hours it will be automatically unblocked so he will be blocked for 12 hours so once the agent blocks the customer uh, customer gets notified on the chat template and and as you can see the message there is a relevant message displayed to the customer and he cannot chat anymore and he has been told that the chat has been blocked by the agent right so now uh, if he tries to reinitiate the chat uh, so the customer is trying to reinitiate the chat uh, there is a system message uh, uh, the system message pops up and says that you cannot chat anymore as you have been blocked right now uh, because we have we have chosen the ip based blockage uh, if customer acts smart and logs and tries to log in as a uh, fake agent like here i am trying to log in as joe blocks and initiate a chat into the system uh, with a fake account uh, still uh, he won't be able to and will be told a message that you have been blocked right so and as i told before as i told you before that it can be unblocked by the supervisor so uh, here i have logged in as a supervisor i can go ahead into the application search for the customer who have been blocked look at at the details like the customer name date and time of the blockage how much time is remaining and if needed supervisors can just click the or the unblock uh, button and the customer will be unblocked after the unblocking <clears throat> as a customer if uh, i am again initiating a chat into the system earlier because i was blocked i wasn't allowed to but now uh, i can initiate a chat and once uh, the customer starts a chat chat gets assigned to the agent and the uh, uh, regular conversation uh, is established so yeah that's a very useful feature and much asked for uh, from a, a contact center perspective uh, uh, and enables and gives businesses power to uh, from a security perspective to enable or disable a customer based on the behavior pattern so i now just to add some context to that and this is for the folks on the phone you know in the past customers have struggled with either irate customers or you know automated chats um, flooding the system so in the past what we would have to do was work with the security teams and either blocking an address at an ip level um and there were very few limited options and uh, one thing that the product team has done with this is given a very easy way for an agent to actually take control rather than being impacted waiting for an admin or somebody else to make the change and the second thing is a supervisor can go and take a look at holistically who's being blocked unblock them uh, and you know from a c compliance perspective this is an amazing feature so again 
something for you guys to take a note of and educate your customers and helping them upgrading to 12.5. So this is a fantastic feature that a lot of customers have been waiting for and one of the reasons why somebody would upgrade uh, to 12.5. So uh, thank you very much for that, Abhinav. Sure. Uh, thanks, Atik. So the next in line is uh, restrict agent typing email address. Again, uh, uh, one of the feature uh, uh, roaming around security. So it has been asked by uh, multiple customers that uh, uh, they they want to restrict the capability of the agent to type an email or search from the available email addresses mainly because of the specific security concerns. So uh, we have added uh, some configurations and given that power back to the business to decide what they want to do with their agent and how. So uh, this is again uh, uh, a, a department level setting where businesses can 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 restrict an agent uh, to do at a department level. For example, if there is a department, uh, uh, if there is a finance department and they are dealing with some uh, really sensitive emails and they do not want their agents to send uh, that email to anyone outside their organization so they can uh, they can choose one of the setting to uh, put some restrictions on what they can do they can prevent the users from selecting from the drop down or they can prevent the users from typing a new email addresses what that means is uh, let me quickly show you how it all works uh, and it all comes together so this is the first setting. Let's uh, let me quickly select uh, the first one. Allow users to type a new email address or select from the drop down. Now this is uh, this is business as usual. This happens today as well. So if you see uh, today, EC with EC 12.0 uh, or 11.6 agents can type a new email address into CC or BCC, or they can choose from the drop down. Right. So this is the setting that will allow them to do uh, what they are doing today. <clears throat> so, but if the if there is a different requirement of a business that they want to prevent user from selecting from the drop down, so they can go ahead and uh, select this particular setting, uh, prevent user from selecting from drop down. Now, the behavior on the agent side uh, would be uh, something like this. Uh, so, agent will be able to write something in the uh, write an email address in the 2cc or bcc but he won't be shown any drop down list now uh, this this particular uh, feature some of the businesses have a particular requirement where they do not want agent to select wrong email addresses and they always want their agent to type a new email address from a security perspective and this has been one of the customer asks uh, so they can very well do this and it because it's a department level setting so they can do it for a specific department the third one in line is the contrary to the uh, previous one where they prevent user from typing a new email address now this is when agent is working in a closed group and they always want agent to select from the available email address and they do not want agents to type any external email address or a new email address that is not in the system so agent agents are not allowed to type any new email address so this is again uh, revolving around the security theme uh, some uh, configurations and more flexibility for businesses to decide what they want to do and how they want to do in their contact center and how much uh, flexibility or privileges they want to give to their agents uh, working in specific departments Uh, next uh, feature in line is finish shortcut keys. Uh, this uh, with EC 12.5, uh, we have introduced six shortcut keys around agent availability for both email and chat channels. Uh, this feature aligns with the finish shortcut key feature that uh, was introduced with finish 12.5. Uh, these keys can be referred from the finish desktop itself, uh, as can be seen here. So this, uh, these are very specific shortcut keys. Uh, 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 control shift V and Z for uh, ready and not ready for all digital channels include uh, which means email and chat and then there are specific shortcut keys like control shift 4 and 5 for ready for email and chat and 6 and 7 for not ready for email and chat these cannot be changed and it's provided within the finish framework from the finish desktop 
So if a ECE 12.5 gadget is hosted inside the Finis 12.5 uh, uh, desktop, these uh, keys will be applicable. Again, because EC 12.5 is also supported outside of the Finis and can be hosted as a standalone gadget or inside an iframe into any other application, uh, in that case, uh, uh, this, this feature, because it is coming from the Finis framework, will not be applicable. All right, uh, popover configurations. Uh, just to take you back into uh, uh, a bit back into 12.0 again. Uh, so with 12.0, we introduced uh, ECE popover and toaster notifications uh, to align with the voice experience uh, for email and chat agent, right? Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this was a new feature introduced in EC 12.5, but there were certain certain gaps in the popover uh, behavior. Uh, so we we have filled those again uh, with this 12.5 release. So now it's a small but uh, a very useful feature of a countdown uh, where finish, we can configure the popover count, uh, popover count whether uh, a, a business wants to make this count down or count up whenever a popover notification comes for an agent. So these are some uh, simple settings again uh, in the partition settings group. It, it comes with the name of popover display settings. All these settings can be found in the documentation, so no need to worry about the name. Uh, uh, you can define the counter type, whether you want to count down and count up and uh, put the number of seconds that uh, counter needs to count for. So let's quickly uh, see how, how it all uh, works and uh, pulls up together. So here I have selected a counter of count up. I'm trying to put a value of zero seconds. Let's see what happens. So it doesn't allow me to put anything less than 10. So the maximum and minimum value are 60 and 10. So I have set the uh, counter uh, and let me initiate a chat into the system. So as you can see, uh, it is counting up. So it starts from one, two, three, uh, up to the 10 seconds because I have configured it in that way. The counter is counting up. Uh, what happens if I do uh, the other way around? So I can go back and uh, select the count uh, counter type to count down. And let me put through a chat into the system. And here the popover comes. And as you can see, the counter is counting down from 10, 9, 8, 7. So it, again, it's a simple uh, feature, but very useful one. And when it comes to the experience of the agent, there will be no difference uh, whether he's working on a voice or a digital channels. Uh, again, uh, there might be some customers who will see that uh, with this 12.5, they are not seeing any 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 call variables in the in the popover notifications like uh, here in my screenshot here you can see right there are four default call variables uh, and you can uh, configure more call variables as per the business or override these call variables to make business specific call variables reflected in the popover so the customers might see that there are no call variables populated here uh, don't worry there is nothing wrong with the application we have made things simple uh, for uh, for everyone. So if for those who know how to configure these popover call variables, we have to go back in 12.0, we have to go back into a config.js file and do the coding and change the code to reflect the call variables in the properties file. So that is no more needed now. So there's no intervention needed in the properties uh, in the JS file and the properties file. So all you need is to just go into your queue setting select the call variables that you want to display in the popover and just click the check boxes. So once you click, uh, once you check all these uh, relevant check boxes for the call variables that you want to display in the popover, it will start getting displayed. So nothing wrong with the application, just simple configuration changes will make, uh, make things handy without any configurations or any code changes uh, like uh, JS editing or, or property file editing, yeah. Again, uh, now coming over to some of the enhancements that we made uh, to make things easier for supervisor. So this is a small uh, but a very useful enhancement for supervisors. Supervisors can now see agent's full name on the chat card while monitoring a chat. So 
this this will give them additional insights uh, will give supervisors additional insights and they can actually focus and monitor chats for specific agents who really needs help and monitoring like maybe a new agent uh, induction trainee or the ones uh, who have negative feedback and actually the agents who needs reviews so earlier it was not visible and and supervisors has to just just choose uh, the charts going on and uh, actually uh, select the charts uh, to see what actually is inside now they can just see the agent name and pick and choose the chat to monitor for specific agents uh, the again uh, continuing to the supervisor related features uh, support support for uh, pick and pull uh, of email from the uh, default exception queue to the supervisors again earlier this was not possible and it was uh, very uh, much asked feature from almost all of the partners and customers uh, as only earlier administrators were allowed to pick from the default exception queue now this feature again uh, was re requested by many customers and partners as administrators do not necessarily always access agent desktop or work on the or work or manage day to day activities it's really uh, not an administrator role and supervisors do often need to to manage the queues pick and pull emails from certain queues uh, and the mail and the mails often go to the default exception queue because sometimes the agents are not available or there are some routing uh, uh, routing exceptions uh, that uh, that supervisors need to fix and uh, pick from <coughs> pick from the default exception queue and assign it back to certain agents or queues so let's quickly see the experience uh, how uh, the agent experience looks like so this is uh, an agent log I'm logged in as an agent trying to search an activity in the default exception queue so uh, I'll get the results uh, select on an activity and uh, as because I'm logged in as an agent, uh, even when I select the activity, the pick and transfer is not enabled because this is these are the activities in the default exception queue which agents do not have access to, uh, and rightly so. So now uh, quickly, uh, let's see how the supervisor experience looks like uh, doing the same use case. So now I'm logged in as a supervisor. Again, going into my search console, uh, trying to search an activity uh, in my default exception queue. Click on search, selects an activity. And as you can see, when, a, when as a supervisor I selected an activity, pick and transfer got enabled. So supervisor can pick or transfer uh, an email uh, activity from the default exception queue and it will get assigned to the supervisor or he can transfer it back to a queue or an agent so very important feature and much asked one uh, which we enabled with ec 12.5 and one thing i wanted to call up uh, abhinav is for, so for folks who are migrating from eim wim um, or uh, setting up ece um, in the past people have used the standalone capabilities which allowed an agent uh, or a supervisor to pick from the exception queue and as you know with the UCC integration, we allow the system to pick the best agent possible. And when you're initially deploying, there are scenarios where emails do not get routed to the agent, and this used to cause a lot of frustration. So again, a long-awaited feature which allows the supervisor to go into exception queue and then go back and modify the business logic so that emails don't land up here. Another great reason for customers to upgrade uh, and something that you want to educate your customers about. Back to you, Abhinav. Yeah, sure, Kathik. <clears throat> All right. Uh, next in line is uh, the attachment. So uh, again, attachment, it's not a new feature. Attachments were already available uh, from EC 11.6 days. What we have done here is we have, uh, we have made it more easy for agents to access attachments. We have made the UI more intuitive and uh, uh, and easy to access. Uh, so before I show you the feature, I want to take you back as to what actually happens uh, with an agent today when an email comes into the system with an attachment. So agent sees an email, there is an attachment, but he cannot access it from here. So he needs to click onto that email. 
then he needs to go into the activity details <clears throat> again he cannot do anything with the attachment and then he needs to go into the activity body and finally he gets to gets to access the attachment he, the agent cannot access the attachment even from the case history or from the customer history so attachments were really difficult to access for agents and it really added up uh, for in the agent cycle time when they were working on a on a on a peak on the peak hours or or on the peak times uh, so it was not very friendly and easy to access attachments uh, let's quickly see how we have addressed this uh, with ec 12.5 <coughs> So uh, here again, as you can see the email uh, with an attachment and now uh, with where, wherever an agent see the attachment icon, uh, a, this uh, agent can just click over there and it will open up a, a attachment overlay where agent can access attachment as you can see right there and then. So they do not have to drill through or click through multiple screens or multiple pages to access a single attachment. They can just click there, download it, work on, uh, work on a particular activity and irrespective of where they are they can click it right there from the inbox card or they can go to the activity body or they can go to the case or customer history uh, wherever there is an attachment icon they can just simply click, click it and access the attachment right there and then uh, looks small but very useful feature as i said it was adding up to the agent cycle time uh, resulting in uh, resulting in inefficiencies in the contact center which we have addressed and acknowledged uh, this was requested by multiple customers and partners and I'm sure that it is going to uh, going to address uh, and <clears throat> going to address their concerns and will be very effective in future all right uh, while we are talking about EC 12.5 features uh, I would also like to mention that we have enhanced EC 12.5 to work with few fantastic eGain product extensions uh, via uh, Solutions Plus uh, Solutions Plus offering. So uh, we are really excited uh, to uh, about the two uh, Solutions Plus product that we have introduced uh, with EC 12.5 release, which are Call Track and Messaging Hub. So call track, uh, uh, I believe we have already discussed uh, at multiple places. Uh, call track will provide a full 360 degree view of the customer across email and chat and voice channels, all within EC agent gadget. And the great thing is that even though it is a solutions plus product extension, but the customer context resides within the ECE database. So there are no PII concerns as well. Call track is available from ECE 12 ES3 onwards and uh, it is already published. Regarding messaging hub, it will enable EC to connect to any messaging platform like Facebook Messenger, Twitter Direct Messaging, Apple Business Chat and other seamlessly. And it will also enable e in virtual assistance for automatic handling of the queries before escalating to agent assistance. This again is enabled from EC 12.5 onwards so ready to be consumed so quickly see what call track uh, license brings in um, so this is again as i said before it it all fits within the ec gadget it is enabled so on day one if a if a customer is only using e, e, ece it it won't get enabled by default it it will be only enabled after the license deployment it will generate the call track activity the call log activity will get generated which will allow agents to take uh, take notes during the phone call and will provide the uh, provide the agent with a full 360 degree view of the customer what I mean by 360 degree view of the customer is reflected here in the diagram <coughs> sorry in the screenshot here so here you can see uh, the finish desktop uh, where the voice coming in and on the left hand side we have the EC gadget with the call log pane and on the right hand side is the knowledge uh, egan solve gadget so here the call came into the system a call track activity got created automatically uh, and agents uh, agent can take notes of the call what is going on can see the customer history uh, how many times that customer has interacted uh, has approached the contact center through how many channels be it email chat voice 
even within the chat because now we have the messaging hub so he might have contacted through various different messaging channels like facebook twitter everything will be visible here in the customer history uh, uh, view of the of the gadget so yeah it's a so very one, useful one, feature it, yeah go ahead kate sorry i mean yeah just wanted to uh, call out one thing so you know we uh, got a few asks from partners and customers on uh, Cisco contact service. So, um, uh, is it fair to say that call track would be uh, uh, replacing the Cisco contact service? Yeah, sure, definitely. So, uh, Cisco uh, contact service uh, is, uh, uh, if I'm hearing Cisco correctly, it is no more uh, an option. So, uh, call track is a, a a replacement for that and and the benefit of call track is that with the Cisco contact service the data uh, the provisioning was done from cloud but here uh, the context uh, does not leave the EC database so there are no PII concerns the customer context and everything remains on the EC desktop which is on-premise so yes um, uh, this is a, a, a one-on-one replacement for contact service I would say Definitely got it. Thanks for that. Yeah. So yeah, I was saying that uh, uh, coming back to the the to the gadget view. Uh, so you can see on the right hand side, agent can search. Uh, uh, agent can see all the information uh, like call variables, full customer context across email chat and uh, uh, voice channels. And uh, on the right hand side, agents can search for the contextual knowledge by clicking on the solve uh, button and can respond uh, using the guided help. Agent can also link articles to the call track activity for future references using the eGain knowledge base and the process guidance. So yeah, it's a, it's a very, full, very powerful tool uh, uh, combining all the channels together and the capabilities together. It becomes a really omni-channel experience for the agents. and and the experience, as you can see here, there's uh, from an agent perspective, they don't have to hop over to different screen spaces. Everything is available right within uh, the finished gadget and uh, all tied up together. Uh, again, messaging hub, uh, again, uh, the capability is enabled with EC 12.5, but it's, a e -gain cloud, uh, it's an eGain cloud offering that will enable ECE to integrate with any asynchronous messaging channels like Facebook, uh, Twitter direct messaging, Apple business chat, etc. It is a licensed product like Cortrack and needs to be enabled on ECE by doing simple configurations. Maybe Karthik, what we can do is we can do dedicated webinars to go deep dive uh, with the call track and messaging hub features. It will take two webinars, I would think, but I think it will be very useful for partners and customers to understand the capability in deep dive and we can do some good, uh, we can plug it uh, with some demos also from the practical usability point of view. Something Absolutely. for future. Yes, thanks for that, Abhinav. So we have a couple of questions uh, uh, um, before you kind of uh, finish your talk. Sure. One is on the messaging hub, just to kind of go over the PII piece, just like you did with call track. Um, so messaging hub, is it fair to say that it's just a processing platform and no data will reside on any cloud or, uh, and it's, uh, all of the data is retained uh, on-prem? And the second piece of that messaging hub is, do we use SMS uh, as part of messaging hub? Do we need any additional uh, like SMS gateways from either the customer or partner or will the uh, messaging hub add-on account for all of that? No, so messaging hub is just an enabler as you rightly said. So the, the data does not leave the EC system. It is just an enabler uh, via cloud. So the actual chat uh, uh, and the transaction history is preserved on EC database uh, and also out of the box today, we have the capability for uh, Facebook and Twitter direct messaging. We do have certified field solutions for SMS and Apple business chat already, but uh, uh, but since the capability is all added in the EC 12.5 and all we need is to enable channels from cloud. So going forward, we, have, uh, we, we are planning to enable everything out of the box like Apple business chat, WhatsApp, SMS, and uh, all will be enabled or, uh, via our cloud offering and can be enabled EC, enabled on EC out of the box. So yes, EC is just an enabler. Data resides within the ECE and uh, uh, all the context is again inside the ECE. So yeah. 
All right. Hope that what about the question. Uh, yeah, that, that, and what about the SMS gateway? Is so no, uh, uh, messaging hub uh, is, is front-ending everything, so there's no, no specific gateway required for that. Fantastic. Thank you, Abhinav. All right, so uh, so Messaging Hub, as I was saying, it provides rich control for businesses by enabling multiple channels of interaction, and uh, the best part is it can front-end them with a single virtual assistant. What, it is also capable of handling messages when agents are not available, like uh, during off-office hours uh, or lunch times, break times. It provides a rich messaging experience based on the channel of interaction and can also provide we do have valuable, valuable matrices uh, to for businesses based on the channel type. For example, uh, uh, we can do agent productivity by channel type, chat volume queue by channel type, and when I say channel, I mean it can be any messaging channel like a Facebook Messenger or a Twitter direct messaging, Apple business chat. So businesses have uh, the capability to utilize e-gain reporting capabilities to to see how the agents uh, are working uh, with respect to a particular channel or how the chat uh, is being served for a specific channel. So it's it's really uh, useful. And uh, because uh, this is a different way of communication, it's not something similar to uh, real-time chat. It's an asynchronous chat where chat can span, span over hours or days, a customer might respond uh, in its own convenient time. So we have done some changes and added a conversational view into the ACE desktop. It's again a configuration setting. And if a business is using a uh, asynchronous channel for uh, communication uh, within EC, they can switch on this view uh, where it will provide a seamless agent experience across the messaging net, uh, uh, networks and adapt uh, to the channels automatically. Uh, as I said before, let's uh, we'll we'll plan to do a dedicated webinar on this very topic where we can go deep dive around these features and to talk about its capabilities in detail. Well, uh, while this was a wrap on EC 12.5 features and capabilities, uh, let's step back and quickly talk about the system requirements and specifications for EC 12.5. Unless there are any more questions, Karthik, before I before I proceed. No, nope, you're good to go. Okay. So system requirements and specifications uh, is uh, nothing different than 12.0. 12.5 uh, is a seamless upgrade to 12.0. It's a supported operating system that we are uh, that EC 12.5 requires as Windows Server 2016, 64-bit standard or data center edition. Open JDK and JT, JT latest edition. Again, customers or partners do not have to bother about the versions because installer take cares of that. Uh, and database <coughs> is uh, my uh, SQL Server 2016 SP2 uh, with CU2 or higher. Uh, both standard and enterprise editions are supported. And JRE 1.8 update 66 is needed for uh, for the workflows of administration desktop. Uh, regarding the configurations, the server deployments, uh, the VM configurations, we still support uh, 400, two, two deployment models with 400 blended agents, what we call as a two server model, and a 1500 blended agent, which is which we often call as a fully distributed model. Again, all this is published on Cisco Virtualization Wiki, no different than 12.0. That's why I'm I'm. I'm re-emphasizing uh, it uh, similar to 12.0 because uh, for the customers or partners who are thinking of upgrading, they can just upgrade their current existing 12.0 systems without uh, without bothering about these uh, system compatibility or VM configurations. So everything will work as it is. Uh, on the Cisco Virtualization Wiki web page, we have uh, also published the OVA templates for both the deployment models. So uh, feel free to go ahead and consume those. Uh, coming on to the compatibility matrix, uh, it's almost uh, supported across the channels, uh, sorry, across the browser. So Agent Gadget, as you can see, is supported now uh, with almost every browser apart from Safari, i11, Edge, Firefox, Chrome. Customer side is supported again. Customer side, when we say it means uh, chat templates for dog and undog chat, is supported across the browsers. Admin console, uh, this is the tradition admin console, not the SPOG admin console. SPOG admin console is 
again supported across the browsers but uh, the traditional admin console and system console is supported with i11 as before this is uh, uh, this is very important and i i mentioned about this at the very start of my webinar uh, please uh, please uh, do uh, pay attention to this and i would request customers and partners to upgrade to ec12.5 because of its backward compatibility uh, i do encourage it because ec12.5 is backward compatible with ucc epcc efinis 12.0 Obviously, with 12.5, it is compatible, but it is also backward compatible to 12.0. It even goes back to 11.6 and uh, uh, for UCC and PCCE. So when you think of upgrading EC, uh, to EC 12.5, you don't have to bother. You don't have to consider upgrading your entire contact center. Just upgrade EC 12.5, which which comes with a seamless upgrade installer. So it's, it's a fantastic uh, uh, compatibility that uh, uh, we have come up with uh, so do upgrade to ec 12.5 to benefit from the latest and greatest feature capabilities of the solution uh, with that uh, i've come to the end of my presentation yeah Karthik, uh, if there are any questions we can take yeah that. just to go back to your compatibility uh, um, uh, backward compatibility that is available for um, uh, ece so one of the things we hear is you know contact center upgrades or refreshes takes time and I think what you and the team have done is you allowed two releases of backward compatibility. So while customers and partners are planning for the contact center upgrade and refresh, you're not prevented from upgrading ECE. So to make use of the latest features, do move forward with ECE. One of the things we have also seen in the field is uh, customers who are on Older versions of contact center are being forced to move forward to make, take advantage of ECE. So please do make use of this capability. Uh, so with that, Abhinav, thank you. And uh, Kirsten, over to you. Thank you, guys. Just wanted to mention one quick thing. Um, for those who might be interested, we do have an instructor-led training course uh, called Integrating Cisco Enterprise Chat and Email with UCCE. Um, so as you can see here, we do accept Cisco learning credits for this class. Uh, it's a four day class and all of our dates that we post are guaranteed to run. Um, and as you'll notice, we have a bunch of different time zones listed here. So depending on where you're at, hopefully you can find one that that works for you. So I just posted the link to our actual website right in the chat there. So if anyone has any more questions or if you want to look at the detailed outline, you can do that there. Um, other than that, like I said, we'll go ahead and email this recording out to you guys early next week. And it looks like all of our questions have been answered. So I think we're good to go ahead and wrap up. Thank you guys again for the excellent overview and demo. Thank you. Bye-bye.